Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. Today's episode is going to be really interesting and as I promised in the previous video, to hold on to your curiosity because we're going to talk about how to modify the global WP query where clause in case if you want to modify according to our needs, how do we do it? How do we hook into WordPress and change things, right? Okay. So let's try to discuss the problem that we have and how we want to solve it. So this is our single post page and what we want to achieve is that it should load the first post and then if I click on load more, it should fetch and load the next available post, next most recent post. Okay. Now when I want to do that, when I want to run a query, a standard WordPress query, right? it's only going to fetch the most recent post. It's not going to exclude the, the one that you currently own, right? So how do we go ahead and exclude that? How, how do we ensure that our uh, post IDs that we are getting actually starts after that, okay? So for that, what we could do is, let's say we write a query, uh, WP query, where post per page is one because you want to get the next available post, next one post, okay? Uh, every time this query is run, page equals to page number. And let's say that we create our custom key, right? Now this key is not present by default in, in WordPress. This is our custom for you can, you can name whatever you want. You can even say Imran post ID, right? Doesn't matter. So choose a name, uh, which should be semantic, of course. So it's more readable. So I want to know the starting post ID and I want to ensure that uh, when the query is done, this data that is being passed is available in the in the global WP query and then we can modify the where clause accordingly, okay? So what you should do is that when you run the query, you pass the starting post ID, put the value of that, which is the value of the, let's say for example, the post ID of the current post that you're currently on. Uh, and then we will use a hook called post where and we can do add filter. And this basically modifies the query to start the WordPress loop after the current single post ID. Okay. So we create a function. This is a custom function name. You can name it whatever you want. In my case, I'm pass using the name as post where, and then you give it the priority and the number of parameters it takes. Okay. So now if you go to the post where function, see what's happening here. So it's going to get two parameters, where and the query itself, right? So here what we're going to do is we want to check the custom query parameter called single post ID. And if this parameter exists in the query, we modify the where clause to ensure we get all the post ID that are less than starting post ID, which is the current single post ID. So let me show that to you. So we get the WPDB global, okay? And then we get the query, of course, over here. Uh, inside of the query, we'll get access to the starting post ID. So notice that when you're running this query, okay, when you're running it, with the help of this query get method, you can pass the name of the key and check and get the value of that, okay? So what will this contain? It'll contain the starting post ID, right? So that's why I'm calling it start. You can also name it like starting post ID if you want but I'm just naming it as start. You can name it what you want, okay? So this is going to give us the value of this, right? What are we being passed over here? So we're gonna get that. And if the query does not have our custom starting post ID and return default where clause, because if this doesn't have any values, uh, you know, then we don't really want to proceed further with our changes, we can just say we can just return the default where clause. Okay, we don't want to touch it, just return it empty, early return. And then if it does exist, which means it's going to get past this code, uh, we're going to say where dot equals to, which means it's going to append this extra piece of code in the where clause. Okay. So, so whatever the where clause was is going to append and it's going to get the WPDB post dot ID less than start. Start is what? Start is the post ID, the current post ID. So if you are on the this post, then 
the post ID is 181. Okay, so that will be that. So, so we will have all the query information available, whatever we run over here, but at the same time, it's going to put a condition saying that and uh, make sure that the ID is less than whatever ID post IDs you're fetching, whatever post you're fetching, make sure their IDs are less than the post ID that you're currently on, which is the current current single page that you're on, single post page that you're on. Okay, so that's what you do. That's how you modify it. All right. Now I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to run it and I'll show it to you. So let's I'm going to take that there. And let me show that to you here. Go down at the bottom and run it here. Page page number, single post ID was 181. So let's put that there. Okay, and then my query equals and I'm just going to print it and show it to you. Okay, so let's go there, refresh, scroll down. There you go. You can see that you've got the WP query object and notice that you've got the starting post ID that you have passed as a custom parameter. And then you have the query variables available, all of that information, right? And that's your post. And notice this is the request where that has been appended. So let me show that to you quickly. So if you check request, so over here, my query request, then you're only going to get this. Okay, that's what we're interested in for now. Refresh. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I can actually go to my PHP my Adam and I can run this and see what's happening. So let's do that. I'm going to go to my workbench, which is PHP my admin. I'm going to go to WordPress and then SQL and then just paste that there. So see what's happening there. So you can always test your query in case if you are running a WP query like this and if you don't get the expected result, just make sure to do the my query, whatever the query is and uh, add a request. So that way you get the request and go to your PHP my admin or wherever you're using it. Then put that in the SQL and see what the query looks like, right? So basically it's saying WP post dot ID from WP post uh, where post, let's see where is our code is appended. There's our code. You see that? So WP post ID and notice what we had added. We're saying WP DB post. So that's WP post dot ID dot ID. Okay. Right. And then less than 181. So this got changed, right? This is getting dynamically the value from what we have passed here is 181. Okay, so if you run it, go, notice that you're getting this 163 ID, right? So this is the post you're getting, okay? Uh, if you wanna edit it again, maybe let's put 163 and what happens? 163, go. Notice now it's changed, it's the 157. So I don't have the posts organized that way like in the consecutive order. That's why you're seeing that random number, but I'm just going to show that to you quickly. So I just created these two posts and if I hover over it, the post ID is 338. So let's try that. Edit it 338 and hit go. So if I hover over it, it's 340. I've created these two posts. So 340 is the post. Let's edit it 340 and hit go. You can see that after 340, we got 338. And if I go and hover over it, this one, you can see that this is 338, right? 338. So we're actually getting the next next most recent post, which is great. Perfect. So I hope that helped. And I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Imran H. Sayed. And please start my repository to support my work. Thanks to all the 440 people who have already started my repository. So please... Uh, start it as well and do follow me on twitter as well my twitter handle is Cody Tank. so i'm going to see you in the next video i hope you enjoyed the tutorial thank you very much bye bye